Hello again, everybody. I'm Danny Z with the Violin. Oh, it's 10.31. My guard just went to bed. I was already in bed, so... Trying to be a little more quiet than I was before. It was fun, but at the same time, I want to make sure I've gotten to the same place as I left off from. And plus, I really enjoy this one, so let's do it. This is the indie game showcase. But this is a part two to this game I was playing. I don't know how long it goes, so I already was going for a long time, so I figured might as well go again here. And so I will. <coughs> Let's continue. <coughs> okay, so is he taking another shot at you? If so, it's stab at the centrally absurd heart of everything you've been trying to overcome in the past year. You would very much like to know how anyone, how Melville, Shakespeare, or even Mark Laidlaw could write convincing combat dialogue for a game in which you punch the heads off of enemies frozen in place by your ice cream hands. Uh, who's saying that? grittier, tougher, and meaner. Nothing else in the game actually supported these aspirations, even though Drew and Josh talked all about them all the time. A single glance at the weapons, art, story, and milieu of this game leads any rational person to a, the inescapable conclusion. This is willfully, obviously, this is a willfully, obviously ridiculous world. John is, Josh is still talking, but you decide, probably wisely, to interrupt. Reason... Josh, hold up. Our primary reason... Our primary weapon is called a gun sword. We have an execution animation that allows you to decapitate an enemy and skeet shoot his head out of the air for bonus XP. You, Josh, excuse me. Use it Rix with a supposed to be this interplanetary Casanova with an alien girlfriend in every location. Josh, hang on here. <coughs> We're still fighting Drew's input that the enemy aliens use an Arabic sounding language. <laughs> uh, okay, it's a slot. It's not very gritty, is my point. Well, that's how it's supposed to be presented. It's a gun with a sword on it. That is how it's supposed to be presented, you say. Mike says, with a sigh, It's the game's signature weapon. And that's fine, you say, because you actually like the M sword and you play a lot. But we're shooting ourselves in the foot if we don't honor what our experience actually wants to be. We go on about how our core base, our core fan base, wants a grittier, heavier experience, but nothing else in the game is doing anything to support that experience. You think that all that can all be done in writing with words? Now I suggesting. This rests entirely on words, Erica says. I've been here without a day off for 38 days in a row now. You know why? Because I'm dirtying up our environments to make them grittier. Words, 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 Sean mutters to nobody. All once you go boneless in your chair. What was billed as an emergency fix in the game meeting? has turned um, unambiguously into something else. You feel like you've gained 15 pounds of paranoia in the last hour. You look around the table. Do all of them have it, have it in for you? How long have they been whispering about your work? Has this whole charade been concocted as an elaborate show trial to convict you as for the imminent failure of Shuttery Future Perfect? The game that absolutely cannot fail? What about the jokes you've shared, the beers you've drunk, the snarky memes you've forwarded to one another in response to some innocent team member's 
I brought you banana bread email announcement. All that camaraderie seems like a distant shimmery mirage right now. So, I gather it's a writing problem, you say, weakly defined. Our whole game is a writing problem. I always glance around the table at one another. They seem to be waiting for you to continue. None of you are giving me any support the entire time I've been here. I need to bring it through, but there are fundamental problems here we can't fix with script changes. You know it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You go on. You go on. <laughs> I'm being too casual and quiet now. It all goes back to the real problem here. I can't make something serious when the gameplay isn't serious itself. But you keep telling me to do this. You're telling me it's going to work. And never once has it. It never once has worked. Now, right now, in this moment, I'm telling you, it's not going to work. Ever. You want a serious, sober, gray sky story, but you don't want to give up on your gameplay? And I understand not waiting to give that up. Not wanting to give that up. It's what everyone likes about Shattergate. <coughs> that doesn't change the fact that you're asking for something impossible. You, don't you get that? You want to have your cake and eat it too, don't you? Mike says. The cake is a lie. I guess softly disdainful eyes closed. Mike, shut the fuck up. You're not sure when you stood up, but now slowly you sit back. Uh, we're, we're a team, Josh says, finally. He doesn't seem to have been offended by what you said. Worse, he doesn't seem to have, have even listened to what you said. This is a team effort. All the theorists need to work together to solve this as a team, and we're going to solve this as a team. I know this is hard for everyone. And E3 is just around the corner again. Any day now, they're gonna be hounding us for demos and <laughs> freaking reviews, interviews, and God knows what else. But listen, there's there is a one thing I, I know, I know about this team. It's that we can slam it home when it counts. We've done it before. We will do it again. And this... This is where it counts. You think about this man missing his son's second birthday party due to an emergency meeting about executing animations. Man, Mike says, it almost feels like we're in that mission at the end of Scoured Lands. Fracture thing with a linear motion gun? Sean actually puts a hand over his heart. You mean where the floor gets dynamically blown apart to smithereens while you're running around on it? I remember playing that. God, it must have been so hard to script. It was so worth it though. Fracture! Now even Josh is thinking to a marsh of warm, happy memories. Yeah, yeah, it was that was a really good build. Then he looks around. We're like, Eureka! Wait a second. Maybe we should base our opening on something like that. Troy's lot eyes grow suddenly wide and wide. Uh, we're not back on the opening again, are we? Just leans over, his chest pressed right up against the table's edge. 
while he hand pups this thing, right? Just think about it. You open up on the player. Lasers are coming down. The floor is getting totally destroyed. Suddenly Josh looks over at you. Hey, y'all know the part I'm talking about, right? Which one? Which one? Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> yeah, damn it. <laughs> I'll say that you might be fine. <laughs> well, for God's sake. <laughs> I will end up clicking one at some point. <laughs> Middle one. Just as the words leave your mouth, the door to the conference room drifts open. Mallory, the audio AP, is standing in the door, door jam, her face all pinched and traumatized. She's breathing hard, her face is red. She must have run here from Greenland, which is what everyone calls the audio department. Why? Because it's a distant, harsh land that nobody ever thinks about, and what's prompted She's balancing an open laptop in her la laptop in her left hand. Oh no! Yikes! I heard you guys talking about changing lines again. Again? What the fuck, dude? I told you. She's looking at Troy now. D D to keep the audio team in the loop on the sheet. We're over scoped as it is. Without another recording session, what are we to do? Just and some eighties. Mallory, we're, we're just... Mallory's still looking at her. Talks right over her, her ostensible boss, Josh. Well, well, guess what? It's it's too late. Grant's in Deutschland shooting with Wes Anderson. We're not getting him back for at least three months. Remember when I told you all that? Remember when I told you what we need to have locked and why? But none of you assholes is ever. He's shooting a Wes Anderson movie? Sean says. Ugh. Why don't we just recast him? Roy yes. the room. His producer tone. Sophie's almost so seductive. Honestly, a lot of his takes are pretty rough. Higher on money. Higher movie stars for games is a waste of money anyway, Mike. Not if you do it right, Erica says. Who had to do a lot with Grant's casting so this? <laughs> How is it supposed to work? How it's supposed to work is you get what you need and you cut it. You don't call one of the world's busiest movie stars back into the booth every three weeks for pickups because you don't know what you want. Mallory hasn't stopped talking. And, and anyway, recasting? Freaking recasting discussions at this stage? Look, audio kinda has to be invited into meetings about things that affect audio. It's audio department, for God's sake. Josh is looking at the ceiling. I didn't invite you because I was trying to let you guys work. His eyes lower to meet hers. You know, because you're so behind. Fuck you, Josh. Okay, Troy says, please, can we just calm down? We're making mass entertainment here, people. Nah. I'm your man. Yeah. 
Godzilla. Okay. Mallory is walking deeper to the room. Third try. No, no, why we're behind? Do you know why we're behind? Because you keep making more work for us. It's like our whole team is fucking invisible to you. Why don't you understand that? Everyone is sort of shouting at once. Except for Sean. Who's laughing as hell? Your colleagues' voices are big, dense, and forceful. Like waves. They're all around you, beneath you, on top of you, hitting you, pushing you. <laughs> you let the waves drive you away. Your eyes are closed. Soon, you know you're there, but in a happier place. On some other better project. In some other better future. One year later. In a world. Of idiots. You were the lead writer on Like a Thief in the Night, a combat free exploration based anti game. How long does it go? Is it just like. <sighs> Latin is supposed to be one month away from shipping. Last week, the team received its first reactions from your friends and family. Beta test. Which were unambiguously catastrophic. Yeah, that figures. You're now in a coffee shop with your four other team members, everyone who works at the company. In other words, it is Monday, 9.30 a.m. A heavy damn towel smell when <laughs> you're sending. <coughs> Maybe it's the five Red Bulls you consumed in the last eight hours, but you feel compelled to start the discussion. Let me guess, you say. They didn't like the writing. The end the figures. Well, guys, obviously there's a million different, uh, I would say this is probably, depending on your choices, they will take you different routes and stuff. It's basically essentially a, yeah, choose your own adventure of a, uh, I guess lesser detailed sword or something. Anyway. More intricate, I suppose. Nevertheless, this has been the writer will do something. Off of, uh, it's created by somebody called Mr. Wasteland on itch.io, part of the indie game, free indie game showcase I will be doing incredibly often now. Kind of doing a Markiplier kind of thing. And with that being said, I have been Danny Tasty for the Corona Violin. I hope you enjoyed. This has been a lot of fun. It was fun to do the voices, particularly, of course, the nasal. They did the Yash one. And, uh, yeah. Can you ignore the drill? I uh, leave that like, comment, subscribe, spam. And uh, that is if you enjoyed. And uh, otherwise, I have been Danny Tasty for the Corona Violin. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope to see you in the next video. And stay safe and fluffy. Have a day.